What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode of TLDR, your weekly recap for good news in the tech and finance space. Our headline story this week is that Alexa stole Christmas. The number one and number two best-selling products on Amazon during the holiday season were Echo Dot, the Alexa-enabled speaker, and the Amazon Fire TV stick with Alexa voice control. Overall, this was a record year for Amazon devices with millions more purchased this year versus last holiday season. Additionally, Alexa hit the number one app on the App Store just a day or two after Christmas. This this is compared to last year when it topped out at number four on the app store. This is another indicator of incredibly strong, not only sales of Amazon enabled devices, but also usage as everybody gets their products. They're downloading the Alexa app to install it and start adding new skills. I help perpetrate this as I bought my parents an Echo for their home. They were too freaked out by it and I don't think they're even gonna set it up, but I thought that was kind of funny. Beyond that, Amazon Prime is on fire. Amazon has announced that there were over 5 billion Amazon Prime products that were purchased in 2017, and there were more new paying Prime members added globally than any year before. Additionally, Amazon Prime is now offering free two-day shipping on over 100 million items in the US, and you guessed it, the Fire TV Stick and the Echo Dot were the best-selling products this year on Amazon Prime. I don't know, I think this is an incredible moment to take a step back and note that not only is Amazon the world's everything store, but now the number one and number two products that they're selling are actually Amazon devices, the Echo Dot and Fire TV Stick. I mean, Amazon's dominance here and now in the tech category cannot go understated. I just think it is mind boggling to see Amazon not only continue to take market share with retail, but have so much success with their own proprietary products as well. They stole the show this holiday season. But on the flip side of this, shout out to Scott Galloway as he'll probably get a kick out of this. Amazon is causing a massive amount of retail store closures. According to Cushman and Wakefield, they're expecting 12,000 retail store closures in 2018. That's up from 9,000 in 2017, which was already a record year. They're also expecting that we could see 25 major retailers declare bankruptcy this year. So while Amazon is seizing all the success and continuing to dominate market share, they are killing retail jobs. I don't know if this is good or bad, but we are seeing the future happen at an incredible pace. I think it's fascinating to note that retail store closures usually hit records during years of recessions, but the economy is booming. We're not in a recession at all, yet retail store closings are at an all-time high high, fascinating era. Next piece of news, Spotify is planning to IPO or direct list on the New York Stock Exchange in 2018. They filed a confidential report that they're gonna list on the New York Stock Exchange with the SEC in late December. This is a really fascinating move because they're not doing a traditional IPO. They're not actually selling any stock to anybody. They're just listing themselves on the New York Stock Exchange directly. This will eventually allow insiders and new investors to purchase and exchange shares in the company, but they're not actually initially offering any shares. According to this New York Times, article, Shopify posted 3.3 billion in revenue in 2016. That was up 52%. This company's probably st still growing rapidly in 2017, I'd imagine as well, and continuing that growth in 2018. But they, it's also important to note, they did post a net loss of about $600 million in 2016, along with that in 2015, which was Spotify's latest funding round, the company was valued at about 8.5 billion, but that was about two years ago. In more recent private transactions, it looks like the company is trading for a valuation of closer to 19 billion. When they start trading, I would expect the valuation to stay around that 19 or 20 billion number. If we think they had 3.3 billion in revenue in 2016, my guess is they grew at a pretty consistent rate in 2017, posting about four to five, maybe even six billion in revenue. Then in 2018, I wouldn't be surprised to see them post seven or eight or nine billion in revenue. Revenue. So valuing the company between two to three times sales seems very reasonable. You know, no one's really figured out a successful business model in the music streaming space. Pandora has been struggling forever. Apple Music doesn't really seem to figure it out. So it'll be really fascinating to see with Spotify, you know, unveiling their financials to the public to see if they can pull this off and become profitable. Next piece of news, Ripple. The cryptocurrency went berserk the past couple weeks. It passed Ethereum as the number two most valuable cryptocurrency. And if you factored in all the future dilution in Ripple, at one point it was even more valuable than the network value of Bitcoin. As I'm doing this episode, Ripple is trading about $3, which equates to a current network value of $115 billion. You know, Ripple is up absurd amounts this year, but that is not only the biggest piece of news in crypto. Ethereum, despite falling behind Ripple, it has been experiencing very strong gains itself. Not only is it posting record transactions of 1.3 million per day, but Ethereum has crossed $1,000 per token. I have some Ethereum. Woo! 
At the current price, about $1,000, this value is Ethereum at a network value of about $100 billion. Really also fascinating to note, the daily transactions, Ethereum and Ripple are neck and neck with about 1.3 million transactions per day. I think this is really strong numbers for both of those networks. This is in contrast to Bitcoin, which is still only doing about 375,000 transactions per day. So these two networks are doing about triple the transaction capacity of Bitcoin. BitInfo has some great data on that. I'll put a link in the description. One final tidbit on this, with Ripple going so high so quickly, one of the co-founders and executive chairman of Ripple, Chris Larson, briefly had his net worth hit $60 billion. This made him more valuable than the founders of Google. This is just a microcosm for the amount of wealth that's being created in such a short period of time by these crypto assets. Moving to some feel-good clean energy news, New York has announced a major investment plan to beef up its energy storage. The state is committing $260 million to energy storage projects through 2025. They have a goal of installing 1,500 megawatts of energy storage. Apparently 800 megawatts of this is targeted towards offshore wind energy. Super proud. I'm living in New York, recording this in Manhattan right here. So I love to hear that we're pushing, going green. In other renewable news, electric vehicles, not Tesla though. The Chevy Bolt has hit record monthly sales for nine straight months. They ended the year with about 3,200 cars sold in December. This is a run rate of about 35 to 40,000 bolts sold per year. This is above GM's initial target of only 30,000. Although I'm still a fan of Tesla and I love the company and I think they're going to crush GM and the Bolt eventually. It just makes me really happy to see the adoption of electric vehicles continue to increase. So props GM. I hope it can last. In other electric vehicle news, this has just made me so stoked. Norway in the month of December, 52% of the cars sold were electric vehicles. That's right. Norway, which is one of the world leaders in sustainability and has a bunch of incentives to get people to buy electric vehicles, is really moving the needle here. More than half of the cars sold, 52% were electric vehicles. This compares to December 26 when only 40% of the cars sold were electric vehicles. I mean, Norway has a goal to have to be selling only zero emission vehicles by 2025. They are well on track. A big part of this push in electric vehicles has been thanks to Tesla. That's right, electric reported like this massive truckload of Teslas going into Norway halfway through December. And that's a huge reason that electric vehicle sales were so strong this past month. So congrats, Norway. Thanks for leading the charge with EVs. I hope the US can see our own electric vehicle market share numbers get somewhere in your ballpark soon. In the hyper change universe. I put out an episode on why I bought 10 hats of Elon Musk's boring company and the initial hat offering. I think these are going to be resold for multiples of what I bought them for, 20 bucks a pop in the future. I also think this is a fun example to show how you can invest in quirky things that aren't stocks, that aren't bonds, that aren't cryptocurrencies, sneakers, and clothing. If it's limited in supply and has the right kind of exclusivity and hype, it is really just art at the end of the day. And so I think that's what these boring company hats are. I also wouldn't be surprised to see boring company hat buyers have an initial chance to buy stock in the boring company. If that ever happens, check that episode out for more. Then Elon Musk has unveiled more details about the Tesla pickup truck. This is definitely on the company's roadmap and is scheduled to be built right after Model Y. So then I made a video breaking down why I think the pickup truck could actually see as big sales as the Model 3. The pickup truck market in the US is 2.7 million sales per year. This is about triple the market that the Model 3 is attacking. I mean, when I looked into the numbers, I was amazed at how many pickup trucks are sold each year. I'm expecting that Tesla will unveil its Model P or the pickup truck somewhere around late 2019 or 2020. They will start sales or deliveries of the cars in 2022. Then I was so stoked about the pickup truck and the semi, the Model Y, the Roadster, all these new vehicles that I decided to update my Tesla model through 2024 with sales of all these new cars. You can check that out for more. The gist of that is I'm expecting the company to be able to scale to over a hundred billion in revenue in the next six or seven years. Then I made a video recapping Tesla deliveries. The news here is everybody is really frustrated. They have pushed back their target production rate of 5,000 units per week from the end of Q1 to the end of Q2, but that is overlooking the good news here. Tesla had a record quarter for vehicle deliveries in Q4 with 29.9 thousand cars. It was a record for Model S and X. They delivered about 1,500 Model 3. Yes, they're taking a little bit more time with the Model 3 than expected, but they are focusing on quality, and we've seen hundreds of Model 3s in parking lots. The bottom line is the Model 3 is ramping. I still think they're on track to deliver about 200,000 Model 3s in 2018. This is going to be the iPhone of 
cars. This is electrifying the entire transportation industry. It is a symbol of where we're heading. I'm just so excited to live at a time in a world where we are transitioning off of fossil fuels so rapidly. And a huge part of this is thanks to the Model 3. So I cannot wait to see that ramp in 2018. You can check that episode out for more. Then I did a book review on Scott Galloway's The Four Horsemen. This is one of the best business tech books of 2017. It does a deep dive into Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and Google, and whether they're good for society or not, these corporations have a combined market value of 2.3 trillion, the same size as the GDP of France. I love this fascinating behind the scenes take at what is really going down and how these companies are actually changing our society. Also in that book review, I make the case for Tesla to be the fifth horseman of tech in a couple years. So you're gonna have to check that out for more. And also I tweeted at Scott Galloway, he tweeted back and said he loved it. So stoked about that. Also put out an Investing 101 episode about Wall Street's best kept secret, the S&P 500, the index funds. This is what your financial advisor does not want you to know about. This is an asset that has returned 7% on average inflation adjusted since 1928. I call it the piece de resistance of capitalism. But anyway, check that episode out for more. Lastly, I wanted to give a shout out to the HyperChange Instagram account. Our handle is at HyperChange. Check it out here. I'm gonna start posting more and more content, exclusive behind the scenes stuff on our Instagram account. I've already been posting some stories. And so make sure to follow us. If you follow me today or this weekend, I'll follow you guys back. Anyway, this is TLDR, your weekly recap for good news in the tech and finance space. Thank you guys for tuning in. Have an excellent weekend. See you guys next time. Peace.